G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags. Today we're going to go over my first impressions of the SA342M Gazelle by Polytrop Simulations. So the first thing to mention is it's important to remember that the Gazelle is in early access at this time and as such is not feature or model complete. All modules in DCS go through an early access period at which time the developers use the community's early adopters as testers, taking in player feedback as well as player research information in order to polish the final product to perfection. While I understand not everyone likes the early access system, the quality of the finished models within DCS is testament to this system working in this case. So, the Gazelle is a five-seat single turbine engine helicopter developed in France in the late 1960s and first entered service in 1973. It's primarily designed as a light scout and attack helicopter using the HOT-3 missile system, but can also be used in light transport roles. One of its most notable features is a fenestrant tail. It was one of the first helicopters to ever feature this design over a conventional tail rotor. Since its entry into service, the Gazelle has taken part in many different conflicts and wars, including Syria, Rwanda and the Gulf War. Its most common combat role is that of an advanced forward scout, locating and designating targets for either aircraft strikes or dedicated attack helicopter platforms such as the Eurocopter Tiger. Although as mentioned before, it has had many successful deployments in a high-speed attack role in its own right. So that's a nice history lesson, but how does she fly in DCS? Well, the truth is, she is not very new helo pilot friendly. Of the four helicopters currently in DCS, that is to say the Huey, the Mi-8, the Black Shark, and now the Gazelle, the Gazelle is by far the most difficult to fly, but its flight issues are not what you would expect. As a light helicopter, you would expect it to be highly sensitive in the controls, but the sheer amount of instability at low speeds that the Gazelle has is mind-boggling. Simply breathing on the controls will often be enough to force the Gazelle into an inverted position while at this low speed range. Worse still is the tail rotor your control. The performance of the tail rotor is so high that even gentle throttle changes or small lapses in concentration or small input adjustments can cause the aircraft to enter an unintended or uncontrollable rotative state. The Gazelle's lack of ability to manually trim its own tail rotor becomes very apparent at these low speeds. It is possible to learn your way around this of course, but it's also something that will be far easier for those with experience with other helicopters that know what to expect from a helicopter in such situations. This low speed instability is the main reason I consider the Gazelle to be an advanced pilot's machine. So what about high speeds? Well at high speeds the game changes. The Gazelle features a very simple to use but highly effective autopilot system that is activated during the startup procedure. This autopilot is actually more of an advanced auto trim. It still allows the pilot to still fly the aircraft, however it takes over the trim controls of both the main rotor and the tail rotors in order to ensure stable flight under load or at high speed flight, automatically countering all torque effects to the point where the pilot can take their hands off the controls completely and not have to worry about the aircraft diverting from its intended course. So why don't you use the autopilot at low speeds to counter the rudder? Good question. I'm not sure if this is correct to the real Gazelle systems or if it's a bug with the system, however once the autopilot is activated it will continue to stabilise the main rotor at any speed, however it loses the ability to trim the tail rotor after falling below approximately 60 kilometers an hour, but I'll come to that in just a moment. While the autopilot is active and the Gazelle is at speed, the agility of the aircraft becomes very apparent, barrel rolls and loops along with other aerobatic manoeuvres being quite possible in this aircraft. Low altitude high speed flight is quite easy, and the highly accurate controls coupled with the small size and small rotor diameter of the Gazelle makes it ideal for my favourite pastime of flying below bridges and overpasses. It's worth noting however that this is at light load. In combat configuration with four HOT-3 missiles equipped, the weight of the Gazelle goes up drastically. In this configuration, taking a fuel load higher than 68% will result in you being forced to fly the aircraft at above maximum recommended weight, and the aircraft performance suffers as a result. At full load, the autopilot system will still make the Gazelle easy to fly, however, top speed will be around 200 to 220 kilometers an hour maximum, and I don't recommend any aggressive maneuvers. The large amounts of external weight make it very hard to recover from even the slightest mistakes or aggressive turns. So once you've flown to the combat zone and located your targets, it's time to slow back down and get ready to engage. And this is the point where things become challenging again. It's recommended that you enter auto hover to engage targets, as this will allow the Gazelle to become a very stable platform to both lock onto targets and to fire your HOT-3 missiles. 
However, to enter an auto hover according to the manual, you need to meet three criteria or else the auto hover system will not engage. First, your ground speed must be lower than 18 kilometers per hour. Second, your roll and pitch must be lower than 30 degrees. And to be clear, this is referring to the main rotor angle, not the fuselage angle. And last of all, your vertical speed must be lower than 60 meters a minute. The fourth criteria that's not mentioned in the manual seems to be that you cannot be rotating at more than a few degrees per second at the time you engage the auto hover, or else it will not engage. This is rather problematic. As I mentioned earlier, at speeds below 60 km an hour, the autopilot stops trimming the rudder. This alone results in a sudden and rapid yaw upon decelerating to auto hover speeds that can start the aircraft oscillating. Pilots that are prepared for it and prevent the motion will then need to control the extremely powerful yaw of the gazelle while also trying to get their ground speed, vertical speed and main rotor all within the set parameters to engage auto hover. Something that I'm not afraid to admit that I've only managed on a few occasions. This can be made more difficult by the autopilot system itself. The Gazelle has no way of resetting all trimming back to default. I have noticed that over long flights the auto trim constantly retrimming the aircraft without resetting will sometimes develop a right hand drift into the main rotor, a drift that the pilot will then need to manually trim out in order to stabilise the Gazelle enough to enter auto hover. While failing to counter this drift should it develop will not prevent the pilot from engaging the hover, the drift will remain after the auto hover system is activated and pull the aircraft back out of hover almost right away. Again, I'm not sure if this is a bug or something the gazelle suffers from in real life. Once you have managed the difficult task of getting the gazelle into a firing position, from here it's once again very easy. Activating the weapon systems on the Gazelle takes around 10 seconds with practice, although you will need to wait for 3 minutes after activation for the systems to be fully ready for use. The control systems for the guidance camera are very easy to use, and once you have the target sighted, simply activating the slave system will slave the Gazelle to the targeting system, allowing the aircraft to automatically align to the target for weapons deployment. And once again, it's as simple as pushing a button. From there, once the target is sighted, the gazelle is aligned, a weapons pylon is selected and the target is within approximately 4,300 metres maximum range, one click will send the gazelle selected HOT-3 missile downrange. The system also features a laser rangefinder if you are unsure of your distance to the target. Overall, the gazelle is an impressive machine, especially for a first release, however, it feels like more polishing is needed. But that's what early access is for, after all. Other things I have noticed is a few poor quality textures around the helo, a couple of low poly areas, and well, the big elephant in the room is the pilot and the commander models, which while they are textured and modelled extremely well, move in a manner that makes them look like animatronics or something out of a horror film rather than humans. But these last points are just getting picky, they don't affect the helo in any way, so they're of very little importance. All I can say is congratulations to Polychop. The Gazelle is a temperamental but interesting first module release, and you most certainly have my attention for your future module releases. So anyways, ladies and gents, it's time to bring this one to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give the video a like if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more. And until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.